The First Amendment is a marvelous thing. Uh, it's basically what stands between you and me, the citizens, and, and an authoritarian regime. It gives us the right to speak freely. It gives us the right to pr practice our religion freely, to get out and protest. It's the right of the media to assemble and make sure the government hears what we're, we want to say. It gives us essentially and fundamentally the right to be different and difficult. In fact, that's why we have a First Amendment. The First Amendment basically doesn't apply to most citizens in this country because they never do anything controversial. So the basic people who are protected by the First Amendment are those difficult, different people who are very controversial. Unfortunately, as our country has moved closer and closer to a politically correct environment where if you say something someone doesn't like, you're excluded, you're not treated equally. Uh, the First Amendment right to free speech, freedom of association, freedom of religion is being greatly downplayed. We're seeing it especially uh, in governmental circles and in state institutions. Uh, for example, the courts have not been very friendly uh, toward what we might consider those very difficult people who are very controversial, especially in recent years. There's a very important case the Supreme Court is going to hear in the fall 2010. It's the Fred Phelps case. Uh, Fred Phelps is the fellow who stands outside of funerals because he doesn't like homosexuals and protests, full of hateful rhetoric. But again, uh, that's always been considered free speech. A very important case was recently decided by the Supreme Court, CLS, or the Christian Legal Society versus Martinez. It dealt with a, a university where, where a Christian Legal Society group wanted to meet and they wanted to keep only the members of their group together in, in voting positions. That excluded people they con considered to be sexually immoral. That would include homosexuals. Uh, because they held that position, the university said they didn't have equal rights, they couldn't get uh, funding and be treated and access to forums and other things that other groups on campus would have access to. This is only because they did not want to associate with uh, certain groups that offended their religious tenets and their religious faith. So in other words, uh, the Supreme Court, in ruling against the Christian Labor Society, said that you have to integrate. Uh, you're not politically correct enough. That's the essence of the decision. You'll have to give up your religious beliefs if you want to be treated equally. For whatever reason, religious people and religious freedom seems to be the focus of a lot of cases and governmental actions recently. And I think that's because as our society again gets very politically correct, people holding traditional religious beliefs, beliefs at one time that most people considered normal are now considered abnormal. That's why we see a very subtle move in government to using the, uh, stop using the phrase freedom of religion to freedom of worship. Uh, it's rolled out of uh, President Obama's lips a lot lately. Instead of in various situations, he's avoided using in, in, what you would, in situations where you would use the phrase freedom of religion, he's using the word freedom of worship. Even Hillary Clinton in a major address when dealing with religious freedom issues is using the phrase freedom of worship. Why is that important? Well, religious freedom activities apply to everything on the sidewalks, wherever you're at, people preaching the, their message on the sidewalks upon stages where people can see them. The freedom of, of worship is restricted to private places, confined places. And that's basically uh, a move by the government, and I'm not the only one talking about this. Other people have, have been greatly concerned. This is a move toward trying to privatize religion and get it out of public places and public forums. What's happened over a number of years is we've seen all the cases dealing with, with religion. Uh, there's been... Uh, an, ex an adoption by the elites in our society, I'm talking governmental elites, which includes the courts and government officials and state universities, that religion is something that needs to be pushed to the sidelines. It's no longer important. And there, there are extreme ramifications of that as we see that a lot of kids in our society today, as polls show, really have no con concern with moral values and uh, the fact that many children basically don't see any meaning to life. In fact, there's a book by a fellow named Christopher Lash, a very perceptive author, Revolt of the Elites, where he talks about this, saying that that's one of the aims of what he calls the elites of society. They are relegating religion completely out of society now because they no longer see it important. But why is all this important and very important? As historian Roland Bainton has uh, commented, all freedoms hang together, even religious freedoms. When you diminish any freedom in the First Amendment, whether it's freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, it's going to affect all the other freedoms because all freedoms hang together.
If there's one thing this country has always stood for, it is uh, freedom, even in extreme circumstances, and pluralism. Well, in other words, the right to be different. And it's what we used to call tolerance. We tolerate what other people have to say. There's a dangerous trend today, I see. Uh, on the extreme right and the extreme left, it seems there's a meeting. They only want their point of view. The left wants their point of view and the right wants their point of view. So what I'm seeing is we don't really believe in freedom anymore, many of us. We just want our point of view to prevail. But for freedom to prevail in the end, all viewpoints have to prevail. We have to be very tolerant, push pluralism, or in my opinion, we're gonna lose all of our freedoms.